I'm Florence Balladay 3060, staying safe in quarantine. <laughs> So I've just finished a load of darks in the Hot Point 9530 Electronic 1000 Plus using all Tesco detergents and vanish oxy action. I'm going to take the load out because we've got something to show you. You can tell by the title of the video. Okay. She's probably left yet. I knew it as always. I'll take you upstairs and uh, show you this new here she is this is my pretty much brand new white knight c38aw compact 3.5 kilogram vented tumble dryer this was given to me by our kind and faithful collector the Vintage Boy 34, or Kai, who also looked after Barbara for me. As you know, the Korea dryer is gone, which sat on here. Uh, a woman came to pick it up who lived in Rystep, I think, or Ickenham. Uh, sold for £35. They actually did a good job. They wanted a, a dryer. They were happy with it, even though it was old. And I then went looking for White Knights, and Kai told me he had this one. Apparently only been used about five times. Uh, very, very smooth operation. It's a hell of a lot quieter than the Creed. You can hardly hear this one. And also, uh, another thing is the main thing. We have a window to see in. Open the door. Oh, basket in the way. I believe this is one of their last models they made. Um, so you're probably a bit surprised to see a sort of a modern machine on my channel. Well, I mean... Not all modern is bad, in this sort of sense. This is basically a vintage design, They, or well, not vintage, but this is an old design. They've been doing this design since the late 1990s. It dates back to the Crossley and Phillips designs. You are looking at a 3.5 kilogram low, so not a 3 kilogram low, so they've got a little bit bigger. Stainless steel drum. I think that's stainless steel, I don't know. Main thing is that the filter is down here. Um, I'll give that just a little clean. And we've also got, I think this is a lint catcher or something on here. Uh, so we're just going to run a load of darks. I did, want, I did want to do a load of towels as the maiden low, so I no longer have to open the door. I'm just film it through there and watch. I'm going to give the thing a quick turn, and you'll just see how quiet this is. It sounds like an induction motor machine, really. The timer doesn't really make any sounds either. Uh, you have a 10 minute cooldown section there. This is basically like my old White Knight WK767. I have also named this dryer. I don't normally name other appliances other than washing machines and washer dryers. We've given the name to this machine of Marion. Now for those who saw the Instagram post are probably thinking, why would you call the machine Marion? Well, number one, Marion's quite a new name. It's not an, I, I normally try to choose old fashioned names for the vintage machines and the more classic design ones uh, so Millie's got sort of a popular new name because she's a new machine but also you guys know I'm very I sometimes I'm, I go very creative with my names um, so if you think about it this way the brand of this machine is a white knight think of a famous I don't know if he was a knight but I, I think he was I thought of Robin Hood, Maid Marion. That's what I thought, what could I think of? And I thought, okay, I don't know anything really for a dryer. Anything that begins with N or K, etc. So I thought, White Knight. I thought of a knight. And I go for women. So I thought, okay, I, I don't really know any female knights from Disney. So I thought, Maid Marion. Marion, I thought. We could call this machine Maid Marion, but 
you know, she is pretty much like a maid because she does the laundry in the house. So yeah, that's why I chose the name Marion for this. Proudly, look, made in the UK with a Union Jack. Any down here, first qual for quality. I've had but two British machines, of course. But yeah, this is a very nice machine. Uh, it would not fit on the on the on the chest of drawers because of the height. So I just put the dryer hose into the airing cupboard. That's fine. That little vent in there. Um, and in the summer month, I will take this machine out to the balcony and just have the machine there. But I think the machine's fine here. Or I'll drag the machine over here, hook it out the window. But um, And I probably will get a condenser box in here as well. But a lot more smoother, as you can hear. So we're going to get loading, and then we'll have this machine going. At least I can even just sit in my on my bed when I'm watching Law & Order SVU. And I can just, as you guys know, I love that show now. Um, and basically just have the dryer going. It doesn't make that, uh, I mean the Creed dryer was a two point, was a two kilowatt, uh, 2000 watt heater. This is a 1400 watt, or, no 1200 watt heater, but at the end of the day it dries things just as well. Uh, so it's the first load the machine's doing, we have done a few tests, so let's see how we go. Sorted myself out of light, God I feel like I'm on Witchwasher's channel with this sort of setup, but it's nice. So we should be able to just literally get everything in there at once. These have not been put through a spin dryer. I want to see this machine's capability of drying straight from the machine. Oh, very nice Tesco smell to that. Tesco detergents have actually got quite a good smell to them. I'll see how much we're getting for this first load and then I don't want to be greedy on electricity and you know be... I think we could get these in to be honest. Although this jumper, I don't think that'll need drying, because that's... Yeah, there we go. I won't need... Oh, another sock. Yeah, this can just be hung dried, or dried a little later on. It feels a bit heavier. Is there something caught in the sleeve? No, that's fine. God, that Tesco stuff smells amazing. Also, with also keeping the door closed, means I don't get all the dust blowing around my room again. So this dryer's got little guides for all the programming. So 66 minutes I'm going to put this on because it says standard cotton program half load and then for 127 minutes is if you do a cotton program full load. So we're going to turn that round to there and I'm also going to enable the high heat on this. It again, it, says, it even gives you drying times. Low heat acrylics 20 to 40 minutes, high heat for polyester cotton and co uh, 40 to 60 minutes and cotton dry 127 minutes. Also is a reverse tumble. Uh, that's why I took this. So I'm going to stick that, I'm going to flick that to high heat. And then I'm going to turn that round to 66 minutes, and then we'll see what happens. Ready? It kind of sounds like a hot point when it starts up. Look at that. Just sit and watch that. Could do an ASMR video with this. Ow. No loud bang when it starts off. And I know the Creator was a powerful dryer. A very, very good dryer. But.
very, very smooth draw this is, I've got to be honest. So you can feel some heat. Yeah, feel some on the glass. If anyone could tell me what this sort of like square thing is round the door, I've always been fascinated with that on what night drive. I don't know if it's like a, is it a, is it like a, um, oh, I know what it is. No, sorry, I've answered my own bloody question. It's obviously a guard, uh, a clothes guard. Probably to stop the load from slipping down here and getting caught. That no, answer my own question. Just like the uh, GE filter flows have and some of the American top loaders. Smell the Tesco detergent. See if in 66 minutes it can dry on it, because the other crew that I think took longer. The crew took longer. I don't know if this is a if this is a sensor dry model, I don't think it is. So nice better watch it. And you know the thing, I can't even feel any vibration through the floor either. There you go. So it does Whoa. about three minutes in either direction. Let's see how long we reverse. Ah, oh, I remember one, I was only doing that, they only reverse for about 10 seconds and then go the other way. I hope so. So we've got 40 minutes on the clock there. I've, I'm using this the same way I use the Creeda, uh, by running high heat for the first 5-10 minutes. We run for the first 10 minutes and then switch off to low heat. Last 10 minutes of the cycle. 20 minutes there we will run it again on high heat um, but I'm now just going to open the door and check how dry these clothes are so with low heat actually quite dry to be honest really um, the shorts are almost dry everything else needs a bit more yeah so we're doing good there and we have the amount of lint we've collected you know, we've collected a fair bit there all right let's, let's resume but this would be more of a more of an energy saving dryer than the other. Now, the thing is, yes, I'm a guy that does prefer to have vintage machines in my collection, but I'm gonna be honest with you about something here. I'm not always one to think vintage are better than modern. And in this case, for a dryer, I think that this dryer is a lot better than a vintage one. In regards to and I'll tell you why, in regards to normal use, so I'm looking at it from a consumer's point of view, and I'm looking at it from my consumer's perspective, not my perspective as a collector. The reason being is that with a normal, like the dry like the Creeda, I was very afraid to leave that thing going on high heat. That's why I did this habit of doing five, ten minutes of high heat. I'm only doing it on this one just to make the test fair. But other times I'll be using this on high heat for pretty much the whole dry, uh, which is what I used to do with the WK767 that we had. Um, the only smell I'm getting off this dryer is the smell of the detergent from, and fabric conditioner, and of course a very sort of newish smell because this has been hardly used. Um, but I, I've got to be honest with that Creda, I did used to get afraid of how hot that dryer used to get because. Being vintage, like 30, about 30, what did we count? 30, well, 33 years old that dryer was essentially, 32 and a half years old. So more than three decades old. Anything could have happened with that being on high heat. Even on the balcony, that's essentially why I used to set the machine onto the balcony, because I was always worried about, you know, the machine overheating or something. So, so basically, this dryer, of course, I'll, I'm not a guy that will ever leave appliances unattended, be it modern or vintage, and that goes for washing machines as well, because you just don't trust them. Dryers, you've always got to be careful of. But 
I'm more comfortable with this dryer to say put on a high heat with a load of towels or something and then whatever I'm drying and going to the shower, going to the bathroom and have a shower for about 10-15 minutes or go downstairs and make myself some food, go downstairs and watch you know something with mum but I can keep this going because I don't I don't fear anything that this will catch fire. I keep coming and checking on the machine but I don't have to be, be afraid because of the credo I was. Um, I gotta be honest with you, I'm slowly starting to feel that modern machines aren't washing machines from again from a consumer's point of view aren't all that bad. For a collector, I would never own a modern machine in my collection as like a collection piece, but I possibly would own like a Beko AAA class or something, like one of those old WM500 ones, you know the ones to test the British Art Foundation, and just keep it as a side machine to wash stuff like towels and whatnot in like heavy bed throws. So if I didn't want to end up like, you know, causing my 95s to, my 95s to end up jumping out and, you know, getting as violent as they do. I'd just put that in a machine that I know would take it and, you know, but I also wouldn't have one for collection. But if I had to like go into a house and say there was an AEG Lab Mat 8000 series, I wouldn't complain. I still film it and whatnot and whatnot. So I'm not as biased as people think I am. When I talk about how I like machines, I'm talking from my collection point of view. Like for example, would I now go out and save a Beko? No, I wouldn't. Would I go and save a Hotpoint WMA64? How would I work? Or, you know, for washer dryer, would I save something? Even there, washer dryers, I tend, I, I'm not always looking at vintage ones. I personally think vintage washer dryers aren't all that, like, you know, speeds on them and whatnot, so... That's why this one, I'm glad to have one that's sort of modernish. I was going for a 2002 model, but I'm happy to have this instead. I don't know, I can trust this one. The good thing about white knights, you can take the lid off them and vacuum inside. With Creed, I couldn't get the bloody cabinet off that thing. But yeah, we're at, uh, still gone. We've gone down about a minute. So this ticks down in segments of, I think, two minutes. So I'll catch up with you when we're on the cool down. Alright, so we're on the cool down now, and you probably can see that the load in there is definitely looking a lot more drier. Um, So I'll say that this dryer is a lot more, a hell of a lot more energy efficient than the other one. Meaning, I only use 1.4 kilowatts when I want to get this one going. Um, so yeah, I mean it's a great, great thing. I'm saving more electricity, especially in these months when I'm using my electric blanket still because it's cold at night. But once I stop using that, then you know things will be a little bit different after that. But I mean it's great. I'll have nice soft towels. You'll be able to see them going round and round. Quieter. So probably could actually get where we're using this a little bit later on at night. I believe now that why not have closed their Crossley factory from what I remember seeing. I didn't think I'd ever get a white night, but yeah, look at that. relaxing those dryers. Yeah. That's still quite warm but I can feel it going down. It's nice about to watch my clothes getting dry and pretty much no fluff going around the room. And 
we're done. So let's see. Oh, it's actually dry, dry. Okay, there's a tiny, tiny bit of damp on that, but that might be because we obviously didn't keep it going on high heat. Like you should, but I want it to be fair test, you know, just like testing the creeder. I'll turn that back around. Oh, see how much lint we collected. Move the clothes out of the way so we don't get anything on them. I'll run all the smalls through. Okay, so that's your load for today. Um, I did get some here off. But yeah, I, I'm thoroughly impressed with that to be honest. Um, considering that load was not, not spun um, in a spin dry, if I'd done that spin dry, that technically would have, that would have been dry. Drops down in there and you close the door. So that there is my pretty much almost brand new White Knight C8, uh, C38AW compact vented dryer, 3.5 kilogram. Uh, this is, I think now, going to be my permanent dryer that I have. And so as I move out and I can get uh, mashing hot point and hoover sets. But, you know, this is what we'll do. Uh, so you will see this machine drying, a lot of other things, towels, even the bathrobe one day. I mean, I can put my bathrobe in there when I go have my shower now, put it in there for about five minutes or so, and then just come up to a warm pyjamas and whatnot. That's how more from the Hotpoint 9530, uh, Mila W562, uh, and of course the weekly videos we're going to do and like the washing machine history, etc. Got all that coming, especially now because it seems like we're going to be kept in lockdown until June. Um, and I'll maybe try to just do any vacuum videos really if not i don't know how long it'll be till i bring another machine back in hopefully the hoover a3060 can come back soon and we'll do that so thank you very much for watching and don't forget to keep it supreme and go with the flow and stay safe